so many of you are using use effect completely wrong in your applications. So much so that even on a use memo tutorial video that I did a while ago that has nothing to do with use effect, the most common comment that I get is can I use use effect instead? No, you cannot. Like stop trying to use use effect for everything. Use effect is not supposed to be used for everything. It's supposed to be used very rarely in a React application. And so many of you are using it for every single reason that you can find. And honestly, it's leading to a lot of bugs in your applications. So in this video, I hope to finally be able to clear this up and teach you how to correctly use use effect and when to not use use effect. Let's talk about it. So let's actually take the use memo example because it honestly baffles me that people are seriously considering using use effect for this. So what we have here is we have a component called the app component and we have one piece of state over here for the items. This component also receives the filter through props and the filters are defined here. It's basically an object that has an optional search property of type string. And then we have filtered items over here, which is built using use memo. And all that this is doing is it's taking the items, taking the filters, calling the filter items function with the items and the filters, and then just returning the items that are currently filtered. And then we're passing filters and items in the dependency array of the use memo. That's it. Now this is perfectly fine. And this is actually the correct way to do it. And if you're not familiar with this, if you're not familiar with use memo and how it works, please go and check out the tutorial video that I did on use memo, because that is going to explain everything accurately. However, multiple developers have commented and even insisted that this is incorrect and that actually we should be using use effect instead. What they argue is that we should get rid of filtered items here and instead put it as a state variable and then use use effect to manually manage it, right? So let's do it. Let's come here. Let's remove filtered items. Let's do const filtered items set filtered items. That is going to be equal to use state and we're going to pass this an array and then we're going to come here and create a use effect so we're going to do use effect import this from react give it a function over here and then here we're going to do set filtered items and we're going to do get fil uh, what is filter items and then we're going to pass items and then filters like so and then we need to provide a dependency array which we're going to do filters and then items like so and then here we have a type error, which we can easily fix because the types are not matching. We just have to type our state here. So we can do string and then an array of strings. And then we can close this and let's do the same thing for this one just to have it be consistent string and then close this and now we have no more errors so this is what developers are recommending that we do instead now first of all what i want to say is that this actually works right this is functionally equivalent to how we had it before we're going to have the same filtered items and they're going to be updated in the same way with the same values as we had it before but just because this is functionally equivalent to how we had it before doesn't mean that it's better or even more importantly that you should use it because if you really think about it how is this component going to render right let's take the initial render right this component is going to re be rendered for the first time it's going to have items here which is going to be an empty array and then it's also going to have filtered items which is also going to be an empty array right so that's what's going to end up showing in the actual ui initially on the first render and then this use effect is going to run it's going to actually get the filtered items from this function and then it's going to set them in the state which is going to trigger a re-render of this component and update and only then on that second render are you're actually going to see the correct filtered items on the JSX on the screen. Right, so this is doing the same thing as we had it before, but in two render passes. So initially on the first render, we're actually rendering the component with stale data. Because let's say, for example, that we actually had a value for the search initially on mount. When this component mounted, search was something. We would not show that search in the actual filtered items because that only happens afterwards when this use effect is run, which is only going to show up on the second render of this component. So not only are we actually doing two renders, which is worse for performance, but we're actually rendering the first time with incorrect data. Data, and sometimes you might actually see a flicker in the application, which I'm sure that you've seen in your own applications or in some other applications. This is a common pitfall of React, and it happens when you use this effect when you shouldn't do. Right, if you compare this to how we had it before with use memo, so let's go back and let's undo all of these things. Let's put them here. Now with use memo, we actually don't need to manage anything ourselves. We just declared filtered items. We just made it equal to return filtered items based on the items and the filters. And as long as we pass this in the dependency array, this is always going to be accurate given the filters and the items, especially on the first render. If we have a search here on the first render, that search is going to be inside of these filters and it's going to be get taken into account here without triggering a whole re-render of the component. So that is more performant and we don't even need to worry about this at all. 
with this, we actually never need to touch filtered items again unless we want to change the logic of how it's actually computed. As long as we have items and filters and whenever they change, this is always going to be kept up to date without triggering a re-render of the component. So this is more performant and this is the correct way to do it, not by using use effect. And this is actually always what I try to teach you in every single one of my videos. I always try to teach you the correct way of doing something and I always try my best to explain to you why we're doing it that way as opposed to doing it another way, right? So I hope that now this is clear that in this case, you have to use use memo and not use effect because it's better for multiple reasons. Let's now look at another example that I see very often in React applications and also a lot of developers think that this is correct. This is actually worse than the first example. That is a chain of use effects. So over here, what we have is we have a card game. We just don't have the actual UI for it, but you can imagine that this would be a sort of a card game. We have a state here for the card, which can have a property of is gold. If this card is a gold card, it's a special card. And then we have a bunch of use effects that basically are chained together and react to manipulating that card piece of state. So first we have this use effect over here, which listens to cart. So whenever we have a cart, which can be null or actually have a cart value, whenever we have a cart, we're basically checking if the cart has gold. And if it has gold, we're updating the gold cart count state variable, this one here, and setting it, incrementing it by one. Then once that happens, we have this use effect over here, which is listening to gold cart count, the state variable that we just updated. And it's checking if this one is greater than three, then it's updating the round, setting the round to round plus one, and then resetting the gold card count, simulating a new round, you have gold card count zero, and you can start all over again. Then we have another use effect, which listens to round. And then if the round is over than five, it's going to set is game over to true, which then as a bonus, if that wasn't enough, has another use effect that listens to is game over, and that will alert the browser and say good game and simulate the actual ending of a game. This, as you can hopefully realize, please, is a giant mess, right? There are a total of four use effects over here, each listening to a different part of the state, each triggering their own updates and trying to sync everything together to make something that is cohesively trying to be a game. I mean, don't get me wrong, this works, right? This is functionally functional, it works, and you're gonna have a game, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have a performing game that has the best code and the best implementation, execution of that specific game. Right, like this is a nightmare to maintain. Trust me, I've seen a lot of projects that adopt this pattern. This is so difficult to maintain because it's so hard to track all of these different updates, right? You have basically one update here that triggers this one, which triggers this one and triggers this one, right? This is a mess to maintain. And all, not only that, but also the performance implication. Every time that you set a cart, you're basically triggering this effect, which is going to update one state that's gonna trigger a rerend of the component that is then gonna trigger this use effect, which is gonna set another update and trigger another rerend of the component which is then going to set this use effect and it's also going to re-render the component. So every single time that you set a card, you have multiple updates in your component and that is going to lead to horrible performance. And what's even worse is that just like in the first example of this video, you actually don't need use effect to make all of this work. You can actually do the exact same thing without using any use effect and actually with using less state variables than what we have now. Let me show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here below all of these use effects and we're gonna create a new function. We're gonna do function handle place next card like so. This is going to take one argument, the next card. So we're gonna do next card and it's gonna be of type card like so. This function will essentially try to do all of these things here in one function without having all of these use effects and without having to rerun the component multiple times just to achieve the same functionality. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is pretty simple. We're just gonna do set card and then next card like so, right? Whenever we place a new card, we actually wanna set it in the state and have that update be reflected because we're using it in the JSX probably, which again is not written here, but you can imagine that we would do that. Then instead of having this use effect over here, which first checks if the card is not null because this card can be null. And then if the card is gold, first of all, in this function over here, next card is not gonna be null. So we can forget about checking for this because we're only gonna have this function be called if we actually have a card. So we don't need to worry about that. But then we can directly just take card that is gold and then we can actually render all of this here and actually increment the gold card count. But what we can also do is we can combine it with this use effect over here because this one checks if the gold card count is greater than three and then we'll also update the round and then set and re reset, sorry, the gold card count. So we can put all of these together in one place and get rid of both of these use effects over here, which is great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and we're first gonna do if 
Next, cart.isGold, right? This is going to simulate this first use effect over here. If cart is gold, then we're just gonna copy this so that we have it handy. Then we're gonna make a second check and we're gonna do over here if gold card count is smaller or equal to three. And the reason why we're doing smaller or equal to three is because this code is only going to run if it's greater than three. And so this code should only run if it's equal or smaller than three. So if it is equal or smaller than three, we're going to paste this over here, which is set gold card count and then count count plus one. Otherwise, we're going to do else. And we're going to take all of this code here and we're just going to copy this one and this is going to go here inside of this else block and then finally the only functionality that we need to have is these two use effects over here so if the round is greater than five we set is game over to true and then if is game over is true we actually alert good game but actually do we really need is game over because if the round is greater than five we can just directly alert the browser with the same thing so we can actually get rid of is game over right we can get rid of it and then we can just take this code here if round five and actually i'm not going to copy it i'm just going to write it manually because there's a difference we're going to do if round is equal 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 to five because here in this use effect right we're checking if round is greater than five the only reason we're checking is greater than is because this is going to run after it's going to run on the next render but here and the next render being whenever the cart is updated but here this update the set cart hasn't yet happened because we're still in the context of the previous render right so in the previous render we have to check round equals equals five instead of over than five because we are on the previous render so if round equals five then what we're going to do is just alert and we're going to put it actually i'm just going to copy this code over here because we do that and it's going to be easy we just alert good game and now we actually have the same functionality as we had it before but it's all in one function and more importantly no use effect is being used and no component is getting updated everything is happening in one pass and we don't need to wait for updates to trigger different parts of the code to run we can put everything in one single function Right, so we actually have the update here that's gonna set a card, that's fine. Then we have this if check over here, which is gonna check next card dot is gold. That is this use effect over here, right? We're not caring about null because this cannot be null. And then if card is gold, we're incrementing here and we're combining it with this use effect over here. We're checking gold card count greater than three. Here we're doing lesser or equal than three. We're running this code. Otherwise, if it's greater than three, we're putting this code. So we can actually get rid of these use effects here because we don't need them. Then we're doing if round equal equals equals five, which is this use effect over here, but accounting for the fact that we're in the previous render, we're not gonna set is game over to true because we, first of all, removed it from the state, but second of all, we didn't need to have it in the first place. We're just gonna check if the round is five, then we're gonna do alert good game and that's it. So that means that we can get rid of these two use effects here and now look at our component. It's much smaller, it's much more performant and it's doing exactly the same thing. And again, this is a great example of refactoring code, removing use effects, removing state variables. We had is game over before for, which we currently don't have to. So that's one less thing to manage. And our application is much more performant and it's doing the exact same thing as we had it before. So in conclusion, if you're thinking about using use effect in your application, think again, because chances are you probably don't need to. And there's probably a different way, a better way to achieve the same thing in a much more performant way that is a win across the entire board. Right, so I hope that with this, I was able to make it clear enough that use effect is not the solution for everything. And that oftentimes there is a better solution and use effect should only be used very rarely in an application when you actually have to. And if you want to learn how to correctly use use effect and more importantly, know when not to use it and want to actually use it when it makes sense to use it, check out Project React, which is my React course that is literally going to teach you everything that you need to know about use effect. And not only that, this course will also teach you how to build a big and complex application with React that looks exactly like an application that you would see in the real world. You will literally be guided step by step on everything that you need to know to be able to build a big application with React and learn all the things that required to make that happen. I've literally poured my heart and soul into this course and there's so much content in there and the students that are currently on the course are loving it and it's literally fundamentally changed the way that they view React and the way that they approach building projects with it. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, it's called Project React and it'll be the first link in the description. Honestly, if you've ever considered taking a React course, this is the ultimate course. There is no other course like it and this is the one course that is going to teach you everything that you could possibly want to know about React. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos just like this one make sure to leave this video a big thumbs up you can also click here to subscribe or you can click here to watch a different video of mine that youtube seems to think that you're really going to enjoy and with that being said my name has been Darius Cousin this is Cousin Solutions thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video ciao ciao